All right, welcome everyone. I'm Bonnie Saratori with Spiritual Acceleration and Shelby Robbins. Hi. She's going to be with me on the clearing. And then also uh, we've got a few announcements, of course. We always have, we always do that because you want to know what's happening. All righty. So um, making sure you all know tonight is on feeling inadequate. I'll give more info on that. But first, I want to just share that um, we've got, oh, okay. So I'm doing these new semi-private clearings. Some of you may know about them, but most of you probably do not. And it's my way of being able to facilitate healings for more people, but more intensely and more deeply than like, like a group clearing. I mean, this is good. I mean, it works. And the semi-private is, is limited to like six to eight people. And what happens is I do, you know, if you, you, I actually have questions that you answer. I check those out. And then when we do the clearing, I've already got info about each of you. And then what happens is I do a clearing that's for everyone. And then I give everyone, you know, five to seven minutes of just privately, not privately, but clearing them, which, but also everyone in the group is also getting the clearing. Um, what's really cool, what I love, and it happens every single time. Someone will say, you know, someone will say, well, I'm still feeling this, or I'm feeling, you know, maybe I feel some blockage in my third eye, or maybe I feel whatever, you know. And what happens is other people, once they hear it, they go, oh, yeah, me too, okay. So then, you know, so you're really getting a lot more uh, bang for your dollar, so to speak, in these summer group clearings. So we do have room tomorrow, and it is tomorrow, and it's on PTSD, so I'm going to be going really deep in PTSD. You know, like I said, everyone will be able to say something about their PTSD, but I'll tie it all together. So that's tomorrow at 11, our time, my time, which is Denver time. So um, James will post the link for the newsletter because there's more info in the newsletter than on our website. So if anyone's interested, you want to get in there, we've got room. So check it out for tomorrow, PTSD. Alrighty, and then I'm going to go ahead and let you talk after. And then also Crest Stone is coming up September. Yeah, we've okay, we start on the 15th, but everyone arrives on the 14th. So I want everyone there in the morning. So I've got the house the night before. That way we've got 10 full days, full on. Shelby might be there, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> this is my girl, my girl, I love yeah. this girl. So um, anyway, so she'll be there. And um, yeah, we got James, we got, um, I think that might be it. Yeah, because Monique won't be there. But yeah, we'll have a cook and all that good stuff. But anyway, one space left, that's it. Okay, so if you've been thinking about it, better do it. Okay, and then the next clearing is August 15th. And this is a good one. This is a big one. And I know everybody in the world felt betrayed everyone okay so we're going to unravel because the betrayed thing because here's what happens we get feel betrayed by someone and we can't let go of it have you ever done that Shelby mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I've done it and you just can't let it go and this could eat at you for years your entire life months days weeks so we want to clean up all this stuff because it's like we created that way back if we unravel it and get it all the way it's over. You, you know, you're not going to experience that anymore because your soul level has learned that lesson. And once you learn the lesson, you don't repeat it. Okay. And that's part of the problem. We have all these experiences and no one's learning their lesson. No one's getting clear and free from their lessons. So they have to do it over and over. Okay. So that's probably what happens is, you know, it's like we're recycling over and over and over and over. Same old, same old. So if I look at everybody's past lives, people have been betrayed every lifetime. Other than when they died like an infant or, you know what I mean, like died early or childhood or something. But everyone, everyone has got that one, you guys. So that's a big one. So that's a paid clearing, August 15th, been betrayed. Okay, so that's a good. And then, let me think. I think that's it, right? Okay, yeah. And then Shelby's got the Awaken the Shaman, which is coming up. So Shelby's going to share a little bit about that. Go yeah, ahead, sweetie. thanks, Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I am teaching Awaken the Shaman on August 11th and 12th, and I am so excited. It's the second one I will be teaching this year in 2018, and so far we have a wonderful group of women coming together for this powerful weekend, and what we're going to be doing is diving deeper into um, 
kind of the basics of energy work and energy healing, specific to Bonnie's technique and the technique we use at Spiritual Acceleration. So if you have spiritual abilities, psychic abilities, if you know deep down that you might be a healer or might be um, wanting to step into this work, this is a great introduction um, before maybe you take a deeper dive on one of Bonnie's retreats. Um, so great start, um, great way to enter into the community a little bit more and learn some some amazing tools um, with me and, and your group. So I hope to see you all there. I believe James is posting the link in the chat on the side, so check it out. Yep, so yeah. it's August 11th and 12th, which is not this weekend. Next, not a week from this weekend. I think two weeks, yeah, or three. Yeah, yeah, no, because yeah. tomorrow, what? Oh, tomorrow, what, what, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. I get like, no, what day is this? Okay, today's the first, right? Yeah, okay. It's going to be next week. Is that right? Uh, you guys, anyway. Oh, it must be. <laughs> Hang on, let me, <laughs> August. Yeah, so Saturday, Sunday, right there. Yeah. So this weekend, so it is next. It's next weekend, it's next yeah. Weekend. Yeah. yeah. So next weekend. <laughs> Don't mind us. We live in altered states all the time. <laughs> Which dimension are we in? <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so let's come back to feeling inadequate. So, oh, another thing, I just want to say, <laughs> I'll just tell them to show me this. So, um, you know, I've been spending time describing what a clearing is, how to get the most of it, what I do. So, we're not going to be doing that in the future. And that way, you know, if new people are, have never been, it'll be in the newsletter, like, read more if you've never been to a clearing. That way we can avoid all that. That way people that, are, that know the clearings, you don't, some of you don't wait to come on until a little bit later because you know I'm doing talking, talking, talking. So you're avoiding that. So we, we want to avoid all that too. So rather than read, read, you know, read talk and everything that we do and say, we won't be, I won't be doing that. Okay? So we'll clean that up. All right. Okay, so feeling inadequate. I do want to say a little bit about that because that's a you know that's a big one. This is something that affects most humanity, even people who seemingly have a lot of confidence, people that are even successful. Um, I mean, you could you know I know people that are like majorly successful, you know, in their business, and yet they feel inadequate in other areas of their life, okay? And sometimes even in their business, even though they're doing great, they're, they're you know, they're finding what, what doesn't work or they're not, they could do better or they're not, you know, not good enough, doing good enough, or whatever. So feeling inadequate is, it's a deep soul fissure, so to speak. And I mean, when you, when we look at the frequency of feeling inadequate, there's a lot of energy frequencies that literally are in your energy field that are not you, like for example, like growing up when you were like an infant or a toddler or, you know, just growing up and, and going to school, there were always times where somehow you were made wrong or you were judged, okay? And those little frequencies, like the person that's saying to you, oh, you're not doing it right or you need to do it this way or What's the matter with you? Or you know, just the things that people say. They're not. They're not thinking. They're just expounding on their, you know, getting upset with someone and and making them wrong or whatever. And what happens is that the body gets inundated with all these other emotional frequencies of other people. Okay, so you're feeling that. Also, when we're judging others and making them feel inadequate, we're also the the one speaking and judging is also feeling inadequate otherwise they wouldn't be noticing it in you okay we see this is a trick this is so cool you all probably know this on some level but it's a good reminder the things that we get irritated with things that we judge the things that we find fault with guess what it's all us and we're only seeing ourselves and each other okay so that's what's happening and you know <laughs> So the in, so what happens is we get inundated. All these frequencies come in of other people's emotions. So it's really challenging, even if you've done a lot of clearing or whatever. If you haven't cleared out other people's emotions, then you know your the job's not done yet. Okay. But also the feeling inadequate 
obviously did not begin in this lifetime. Okay, so it began way back, like way back. In fact, it probably even began at that initial separation time, actually, yeah. So depending on the energy frequency, see what happens for me is when I'm doing a group clearing, I'm meeting the energy of everyone collectively. Now, some people are going to be able to go further back than others, but basically what happens for me is I will take everyone all the way back only if the door opens for me to do that, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is I get the knowing, because I, you know, I go direct, I get the knowing that, because I'll check in, I go, can I take them back? And I'll get, if I get a no, then I don't do it. And then sometimes too, I, I'm scanning the energy and I just, all of a sudden will be, it'll just, it'll just present to take them back. And so that's what I do. I just meet, I'm meeting the energy with everyone and, and how the collective is presenting and then clearing it from that. And like I said, if it's, if I meant to do something in, in particular, then it will, it will present and just light up or all of a sudden I'll get the knowing and I could be over focused over here and all of a sudden I'll get the drop in knowing to do something and I'll just, you know, follow that. So, uh, that's, um, you know, most things start from that original, uh, separation. But basically, um, what happens too is you anchor or you anchor in these beliefs and you draw conclusions. Okay. So for example, when I was like 14, um, yeah, I had to start cooking for when I was 14. My mom was a worked nights. And so this is, this is my training on cooking. <laughs> so I'm in the, so my, my mom getting ready to go to work. She's Bonnie, you need to cook dinner. I'm like, what? <laughs> she goes, yeah, there's, there's that, there's some of that in the refrigerator and there's that. And I'm like, I had no idea. I had no, I, I never cooked, but just like that, I was cooking dinner, 14. So I felt like, I felt slightly inadequate because I didn't know what I, I didn't, I had, there was nothing. All I ever knew was watching my mom or, but I wasn't paying attention. You know what I mean? I mean, I saw her cooking stuff in the oh, fry no. pan, but I wasn't <laughs> paying attention. So anyway, but that was, you know, that was a, a good one of feeling inadequate. Okay. So since then, of course, I cooked a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. You figured it out. I figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. When I got married, I used to cook. I get, my sister-in-law gave me this cookbook. You guys, it's such a trip. I even showed James this cookbook from way back. The wow. six, this book's from the 60s, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and I would just pick out things and cook something new every single night. And I did that in that trip. So anyway, yeah, so I didn't feel inadequate anymore about cooking. So, but the point is, is we feel inadequate about many, many, many different things, okay? So, um I'm going to actually be asking you to think about certain things so that we can light, light it up more once we get going in the clearing. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically that feeling inadequate can happen when you least expect it. I mean, you can feel inadequate in your love making. I mean, people feel that, right? You know, mm -hmm. and it's like they feel in Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Men, men feel inadequate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's all this, you know, all these different places where people feel inadequate. And, and usually there's not just one area. Oftentimes there's many areas of feeling inadequate. Okay. So it can be like in school or, um, you know, in communication or, you know, how you are in the world shopping. I mean, it could be anything, things that we would never think of, right? Anything you can want to share on that or think of on that? Yeah. I think for me, just as a woman, a lot of it's been around my body. Like, oh, am that's I right. thin enough? Am I pretty enough? Will they like me? Am I sexy? Like, what do I wear to this thing? Right. I don't know. Right. Right. Oh, that's like, yes. <laughs> so that for me, I think has been my biggest Wow, that's that's I remember, sweetie. I remember. I'm going, what? What? <laughs> yeah, that was such a trip. Yeah. She was about. You did ballet. I did ballet, so I looked at myself in spandex in front of a mirror for forty <laughs> hours a week. <laughs> While it, when I was thirteen, going through puberty, oh. so it's just this critic. Yeah. And constant. Yeah. And Luckily, I met you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I forget all the areas, yeah. but it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, feeling inadequate is just such a, it's so big, so big. Penetrated. 
to us. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And then too, it's like it's like all like I was saying. The, here's another thing, people. I just want to, I think this is a good reminder. Even people have heard this before. You know, it's a, it, we can have all the thoughts we want. We can have all our judgments that we want. But if we're going to have them, keep them here. Keep them in your own body. Okay. So what happens is on an energy level, when we emotionally judge somebody, like for example, let's just say that, okay, like Shelby was in her with the, you know, doing ballet mm -hmm. and I don't really know what you thought was wrong with you. What, like maybe what? Do you remember? Um, too thin or too, yeah, too too big. Too big. I thought I was too big. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. To be smaller. Okay. So let's just say that. Let's pretend that I'm judging Shelby. Maybe I'm thinking she's too big. Okay. So I there's an any you people. It's anytime there's a judgment, there's an emotion in that judgment. Okay. So if I'm judging her, saying, "Oh, you know, you're too," I'm maybe I need, maybe I don't say it out loud to her, but I'm thinking it, but I'm also feeling it, but I'm really making it about her. I might tell somebody else she's too fat, okay? But there's that emotion, and it's that emotion that comes out of us and perpetrates and penetrates other people's body, okay? So your judgments, your feelings are going to go into other people's body and they're going to feel it. It's just an emotional frequency that they're feeling that's actually yours. It's not really theirs. Okay. So when the thing, like, like I said, you know, people are going to be judging others all the time. You're going to, uh, you know, feel all kinds of different emotions. But the key is, is if you let yourself just feel your own self, like if I have a judgment and saying, well, she's too fat and I kind of stay with my own self and just feel what that feels like, my energy is not going to penetrate her and, you know, go into her, her energy field. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's something even no matter what you're doing, it's like stay behind your eyes, stay here, keep your, your awareness, keep your emotions here. That way you're not bleeding on to other people or leaking on other people. You know, what people don't understand is that, you know, you, you, you're feeling other people, you may not know it, but you are. And we're all doing that. But the more we can stay within our own selves, then we're no longer pushing our energy into others. So we're not being the perpetrators or, you know, we're not adding to the mix. We're not adding to what people are already feeling. Okay. So that's another thing too. But like, for example, you know, she'll be feeling that way. Of course, she's going to have, She's going to, that feeling is going to attract and draw to her other people, other discarnates, dead people that have that same feeling. And then it's going to, there's going to come more and more and more. It's going to fill her body. Then the issue gets bigger and bigger. And I mean, truly, yeah. right? It, yeah, and then. Spirals. Do you remember getting clearings on all that stuff? I do. <laughs> and after I was like, wow, I'm so thin. <laughs> like, they're yeah. all gone. <laughs> yeah. And you, <laughs> there, there yeah. They go. <laughs> yeah. And you, and you do feel lighter. You feel lighter you physically, yeah. but something feels different inside because you don't have these people with that same feeling all crammed up inside of you. Okay. So that's another thing. It's like people don't, understand, don't get when I talk about discarnates, entities, dead people, I'm telling you straight up, you think you got one or two? Guess again, we're talking hundreds, plural, hundreds, okay? Every issue you got, you've pulled in energy frequencies that are not you. Thought forms, beliefs, other people's frequencies, and you're bombarded, you're full of people's, other people's energy, other people's beliefs, other people's frequencies, okay? So, yeah, I know I remember way back when I was, when I used to do more traditional shamanic practices, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Lay down, do drumming, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, I don't do that. Don't need that anymore. So, yeah, and I, you know, back, way back was like, oh, yeah, there might, might be a few, but then I'd be starting to say, what? I mean, there's a whole bunch more than just a few. What? There's over 100? What? Oh, okay, it just kept going, okay? So there's a, just so you know, there's a lot, okay? And we don't take everything out at one time because I, I learned that lesson way back in the 80s. When I kind of traumatized someone, I took over a thousand entities out. And he didn't know who he was. He couldn't function at all. And he was traumatized, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we, there's a reason why we don't get everything out all at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can mess people up. 
You know, when you have that many entities in you, you don't know who you are, truly. You really don't know. I mean, I still have that. Take some, you know, take it out and get to a certain amount. It's like, that's enough. And they, st I still have people going, they don't, you know, they just are feeling a little lost. They don't know who they are. And, yeah. yeah, so it gets a little traumatizing. So, you know, we want to make sure that we clear a lot out, but we also want to make sure stable. I even cleared out one time. I only took out two or three really, maybe one might only like two, like really friggin' black evil stuff. Mm -hmm. The person couldn't function at all. Like yeah. it, it was so tilted, mm -hmm. couldn't couldn't function. So, yeah. yeah. So depending, everything's everything's dependent on, um, you know, you're the individual. Yeah. Okay. So feeling inadequate. It's not just you. In fact, a lot of the thoughts you're having are not yours. Okay. We've been this one. Remember, I kept, remember I tell you guys that? Yeah. This is not, this is not you. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that felt like when I would say that? Um, I remember the first time you said that to me and I was like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. And then I remember the first time you pulled a thought out and then I couldn't find it anymore. <laughs> it's like, what did Bonnie do to me? <laughs> What? <laughs> it was really strange. Yeah. And then I started noticing how loud how my loud it, mm -hmm. space was. Right. Was, right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So in our program with Shelby and our other, other, other team, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would say this all the time. It's not, they say something, well, that's not you. And they'd like, my granddaughter got really mad at me. Oh, oh my God. She got <laughs> no. so mad at me one time. She goes, everything's not you or not me and it's like well it's probably true Heather. <laughs> but anyway so um but coming back to the 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 thought stuff and the the, the entities your thoughts i guarantee you your thoughts are not yours that you're thinking you have these thoughts you know that are running through your mind they're not yours i've i've released like that thousands and thousands of times i've proven it every single time so we'll, we'll start trying to try and clean some of that up too tonight. Your thoughts, you know, the, the thoughts that, that hound you when feeling inadequate. Some people are more haunted by that feeling than others, you know. So what we want to do is clean some of that up. What you're, what you're really hearing, you're hearing all these other people's thoughts, the dead, the people that are inside of you. You're hearing all of them. And also you're pulling in, like sometimes, you know, you're, you're actually hearing your mother's voice, or your father's voice or other people that you've known throughout your lifetime. It's like their frequency comes in and it's an aspect of them. It doesn't mean that there's, they're in you, but there's this aspect of them that is there that is in you. Okay. So remember everything's energy and we're all, we're all in this, we all are that same awareness. So if you really get that, like for example, right now, when you just like, if you become aware of your own self and you become aware that, oh, you know, your awareness is just hearing my voice, hearing me talk. You have the awareness that you can see the visuals or, you know, you're having an awareness. That awareness is the same awareness that we all are. We are all that same awareness. So when you start to understand that, that awareness, it becomes the all that is. And then also when we, experience ourselves in our separateness we are still in the same awareness so if i'm having thoughts or feelings about shelby i can pull her up and she'll she'll all of a sudden be thinking of me or or i'll come into her awareness you know because we're we're in that we're all together we're all in the same frequency and you know they have a lot of time you know all of a sudden you'll think of somebody and then they call you or you call them and they say oh i was just thinking about you well yeah of course we're on that that wavelength but the point is is that we do experience other people's frequency, their thoughts, their especially from childhood or growing up or whatever. We we uh, we literally pulled in some of their frequency that keeps these energies and thoughts moving. So we want to start cleaning that up. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start getting ready, and I will be walking you through the first steps. So even if you've not been before. And, you know, you're feeling like, oh, I don't know what to do. Don't worry about it. Okay. Just you're here. You showed up. That's all you need to know. All righty. And then also Shelby and I are going to be working together. So both of us are going to be doing the clearing. Okay. So you'll hear me. You'll hear her. And uh, we'll be doing our little thing. And I mean, I use my hands a lot. <laughs> I love thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I go into these states and it's like I'm there. You know what I mean? It's like I'm in it. So, yeah. And then, um, 
yeah, and then at the end we'll we'll kind of pull you back together and and, and uh, yeah. So so for now, what, what I want you to do is be let your body be really comfortable. We want you just to relax, let the body be comfortable. If you can lay down, do so. And if not, then sitting in a chair where you're very comfortable. Make sure your phones are turned off. Make sure there's no TVs. Make sure that you know you're by yourself. No one's going to come in and be disruptive. And you know this is a this is for you. This is an opportunity for you. Okay. And then we're going to both go ahead and we're going to surround your entire body with light. And then I'm also going to remind you that you really can. Like if you've got anybody that you would like for them to have the clearing, maybe you've got children, maybe you've got parents, maybe you've got friends, coworkers, it doesn't matter. You can call them into this clearing, okay? And all you do to call them in is think about who that is that you want to call in. And then you just ask, come, you know, ask for them to come and be present for the clearing. And what will happen is their, soul, their, their higher levels or soul levels will bring in their soul levels. I We will see them, and we will do the same thing with them that we're doing with you. We're going to surround them with light, and once we do the clearing, we're going to be, they're included in the clearing as well. Okay, so everyone's going to be included, but you can bring in anybody you'd like. Okay, so just think of anybody, even people that have passed, you can also call them in or, or think about them, because here's the thing, clear out stuff from this lifetime, they're free from it in the next incarnation. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so call in anybody you want. And then you're going to ask for me and Shelby to come and be right beside you. We're going to be on either side of you, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to stand on either side of you. You'll feel our presence. You'll know we're there. Good. All righty. <clears throat> okay, good. Now, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to think about a time perhaps when you were feeling inadequate. Maybe it was during intimacy or maybe it was in school or maybe it was talk, talking to somebody or, you know, whatever that was when you felt that feeling, that experience of feeling inadequate, okay? I want you to light that up for me. Good. And I'm just going to remind you what you remember the feeling that you remember, that you're familiar with, is still in your conscious mind. Clearing that isn't going to change your life, okay? So now I'm going to stay with that feeling. Let it be there. Just rest in that feeling for a moment. And then I want you to go right underneath that feeling, because you can. And now you're going to feel into the what's the next emotion, right underneath the one that you've been experiencing. Good. Now, if you stay right there, just stay right there. And again, take your awareness. Once you're just stay with it, you allow it, then you you can go underneath it. So now take your awareness. You're going to go under this, under this next emotion, underneath this emotion to find the next emotion. Okay? Just going right underneath. Now we're touching the subconscious. You know, can see that. Good. Now we're going to go one more down. But first, you must stay with this emotion, know it, feel it. Might be things like despair, anguish, might be hopeless, all kinds of things. Might just be sad, might be frustrated. Let it be. Don't try to stop it. Welcome it. Say yes. Now, take your awareness. Go right underneath that emotion. And let's go see what's there underneath this. Good, good, beautiful. Now we are in your subconscious, which is where I want to go. This is what I needed to go deeper in, into the clearing. Beautiful. <clears throat> Good. So now I don't need your help anymore. So now just take it out of the way by just listening to our voices. Okay. And we're going to get going. <laughs>